So here um, we're going to start applying the idea of um, like a percent composition. That's something that we're going to call it later. Um, but the idea that if I have one mole of a compound, that means that I have a certain number of moles of the elements that make up the compound, and it's um, related to the ratio of atoms inside of one representative particle for that compound. Um, now let's see what that means here with um, the compound freon that we're all familiar with. However, its actual name is IUPAC name, or the fancy names that we like to give chemicals, um, is dichlorodifluoromethane, and that's one giant word, so we like to call it freon. Um, I just thought my kids might like that. Um, we can make certain conversion factors dealing with moles of freon. Okay, so think about it as just one particle. So I've got C, C, L, 2, F, 2. Okay, for every one molecule of freon, I've got one carbon atom, I've got two chlorine atoms, and I've got two fluorine atoms. But again, since I'm not just going to be able to pull out one molecule of freon and say, ta-da, I can do, you know, I can isolate these or count these or whatever, we deal with moles of freon. And if we can find moles of freon, then we can find moles of each of the atoms inside of it. Okay, so now instead of just looking at one particle, we can look at one mole and say that one mole of this big molecule freon, not really super big, but uh, it's going to have one mole of carbon, two moles of chlorine, and two moles of fluorine atoms. So we can write conversion factors um, saying like one mole of carbon for every one mole of freon. We also have two moles of chlorine for every one mole of freon. And I'm getting this from that formula, okay? There's one carbon for every one of these, two chlorines for every one of these, and two fluorines for every one molecule of freon. But since, again, we're looking at the molar scale, now I've got a mole of carbon atoms for every mole of freon, two moles of chlorine atoms for every mole of freon, two moles of fluorine atoms for every mole of freon. Okay. And this is useful <clears throat> in determining a number of atoms of a specific element when you have a whole bunch of the compound that it is in. Okay, so here if I know that I've got a certain number of moles of freon, I can see how many fluorine atoms are present. Okay, and we kind of alluded to this um, back when in the previous set of slides when we counted the number of moles of oxygen atoms in a specific number of moles of oxygen molecules. So um, we did this without even knowing. Okay. So here I'm going to take what I know. I know that I've got 5.50 moles of freon, so I'm going to write CCL2F2, dichlorodifluoromethane. And I want to get out of moles of freon and into moles of fluorine. So that means that I want moles of fluorine on top and moles of freon, so that way they cancel in my denominator, CCL2F2. Okay. I know for every mole of freon, there's two moles of fluorine atoms. Okay. That'll cancel. And so now I've got 5.5 times 2, so that should be 11 moles of fluorine atoms. Fatoms. <laughs> All right, there you go.